Good morning, good afternoon, depending on where you're watching us. This is Norma Gonzalez. Welcome to the program, The Fingerprints of God. Today we're going to have a special friend, <laughs> Hope Olivas, which is uh, Prophetess Hope Olivas. I love my friend and I am so grateful that you're here today. We just did a uh, Spanish. <laughs> just Spanish. Yeah, right? yeah, we did it. <laughs> um, but thank you for coming. Thank you for uh, spending some time with us today. And uh, I want to say thank you, Hope, again. And today, the title of the program is The Prodigal Son. Yeah. I love the subject because. As you know, we were prodigal once, it's upon a time, yes. you know, and unfortunately we have prodigals as well. So we're fighting this fight with you guys. You guys are not alone and we know what we're talking about. We're speaking of uh, not only a head knowledge, but we're talking about experience. The heart knowledge. The heart, <laughs> oh, the heart, heart knowledge. knowledge is Amen. horrible. But Hope, let me ask you a question. What is a prodigal son? Prodigal son is a, a lost son, a son that's lost, that, that has went away from too. Like, it, it's kind of like a backslider. Mm. Isn't that funny? It's a, it's a backslider, but in the world we don't call them that. We call them people that are lost, people that that are a, go away from what's been established in their homes. Or um, for us, it's more of our faith. Our faith mm -hmm. in God and, and them going away on their own, doing whatever they want. Okay. So, um, our topic today, because we have short time, so I'm going to encourage you guys to go look the book of Luke 15, 11 to basically 24. And you're going to see what we're talking about. And, uh, of course, like I said, we have our own experience. I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys that are watching have your own experience as well on what is a prodigal son or daughter. And that's why I had a hope to kind of explain what is a prodigal son. But let me ask you another question, Hope. Um, do you believe that the prodigal sons are capable of coming home? Yes, definitely. I think that... Uh when we when we see our prodigals not that they're ours but that they belong to god when i um when i was raising my children one of the things was their father was not involved in their lives i told god if i'm going to do this i can't do it alone you have to be their father and god made me a promise a long time ago so when they my kids go stray i'll be like you're their father because mm -hmm. if i die today they have a father and it's God wow. and they come to know that I've always told them you belong to God I have to go to sleep at the end of the day but you belong to God and when I go to sleep my first thought is I prophesy that my children are coming back to God that they are hungry for him I don't say they're hungry for mom yeah, no. They're hungry for him. They're hungry for, it. you know, our kids, because they know the word. And I know Norma's going to ask that question. They know the <laughs> word of God. She's jumping um, ahead of they, me. <laughs> they they, they kind of throw your the word back at you. Yes, So they when do. they see you go left, they'll be like, wait, doesn't the Bible say? And see, it's funny how you say, oh, man, my kids forgot all the word. But let me tell you, they will quote the word to you. And they will look for it just so they could fight back because they <laughs> want to say that they're right. You know what I mean? And then they'll try to put the word in th things that they're doing wrong. But see, here's the thing is God's not intimidated. I think sometimes we think we're insulted. We're like, oh, my God, what if, you know, he's disrespecting <laughs> me. But God is not intimidated. I think sometimes even God laughs at those things like because he knows what he invested. And that's what I was telling Norma. He knows what he invested in each of us. We were all astray. I used to think sometimes um, somebody was talking about suicide this morning and I was thinking I was suicidal from the age of uh, 13 to almost 18 years old, but it was an issue that I had within myself hmm. that I was, you know, I know they say it's, um, it's a, um, like you're, you're feeling sorry for yourself, like that victim mentality. When in reality I was, I was raised, 
as best as possible. I had my food on the table and we, you know, we lived every day. I, it wasn't bad. My mom went to church. She dragged me to church when she went to church, even in the Catholic church, I had to sit there and, you know, do everything. But I remember that what I was listening to and the sound that I was listening to wasn't freeing. It wasn't helping me. I, I felt still in that dark hole. But when I met Jesus, when I met him, not my mom, mm. not mm. my dad, not the things that they used to put in my, you know, my face, because my dad was no longer there. I always said my dad. But what my mom used to tell me or put in my face, which was truth. The Bible was truth. When we give our kids truth, when we try to manipulate them, that's a whole different story. But when we give them truth, that truth comes back. Mm. And it becomes different. So when I got to know who God was, my life changed forever. Completely. Completely. Your attitude starts changing. Your thoughts start changing. You're not thinking about destroying yourself. You're thinking about God help me. Mm. Because there, you don't realize what was trying to take you away and why your parents were so fierce in trying to get you to the place of go to church or it wasn't no. about the building. It was about the God in the building, the God in the building. And see, it's so amazing how she said, my mom, it was in church. She was taking her to church, which it takes me to the second, to the other question, which is <sighs> hope. Why do you think there's a lot of sons of pastors, apostles, prophets in the street? Why do you think there's so many prodigals out there? I think the world entices our children it, and, and the enemy uses the world, the social media vein, all those things are, or they feel like, I don't feel like going to church or they'll say, oh, well, so-and-so is a hypocrite or they see the, the you know, cause pastors and leaders always go through things they they hurt you know people by people unfortunately hurting people hurt people, people and that's what we have always known so they're hurting their parents or they're like why do you go i remember one time my my children were like why do you go to that church they hurt you all the time you know the thing is is that i tell them i don't look at people i look at god and they just always, oh, here we go. The life lesson. You know, everybody got to get a life oh lesson. <laughs> and, and we're going to, don't ask mom a question because she's going to give you a life lesson. But see, I tell them if I went to church for people, I would never go to church. And they, they stood quiet because I told them I go to church because God says in his word to not forsake the assembly together of the brethren. But I don't go to church because I'm looking for everybody's sins or what they're going to do to me. Mm -hmm. I used to do that all the time. And you know what we need to see as a church too, that we could, um, we could fall back and we could backslide in our hearts oh, if we're on. not careful. And all of us, and you guys could hide behind walls, but I'm not going to hide behind walls. I've done it too. All of us have done it. And if we, we really look at it, we've had to retract our steps and say, no, we have to go back to the reason why we started coming anyways. We become like the prodigals because the prodigals will tell you everything you do wrong, every mm. time you messed up, every time your husband and you fought, they'll tell you everything in five seconds. They'll become lawyers for what they're doing wrong. And the truth <laughs> is that God is not looking at them going, man, you're the worst kid ever. You're th that's a horrible kid. Slap them, Norma, slap them. You know, he's not doing that. He's saying, come on, let's partner. Let's war. <laughs> let's war for those kids. Let's move in and let's begin to prophesy what God said in his word. Because those kids are not your kids. And I think I said that. Um, mm -hmm. Your kids, but they're his kids first. You know, when you die, unfortunately, your kids are not going to sit in the room with you. It's going to be you and God. Mm -hmm. And it's not going to be your kids. So when you have your kids here, you have this, whatever time God gives you with them to begin to show them who they are. And if you don't know who you are, guess what? We're going to show them who we're not. And so we have to begin to show them who God is and that he's real. You know, I always hear people say, oh, well, that's not a real body. Well, how much time do you spend with God? He's real. He walks with us. He talks with us. He convicts us when we're wrong. You know, sometimes we don't even want to tell our children, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. 
because we're so there's so much pride built in us. I am the parent, and depending on what culture you grew up in, that's always there. I I am the beyond all, and 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 I am the striving force. But the truth is, the head of household is Jesus Christ, is God. And when you go to him and you ask him, look, I don't know what the problem is. He's going to deal with you, right? He deals with us. Isn't that, I, I always tell God, I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about them. He says, we want to deal with you first. And as he unscales and he takes apart everything that was given to us as children, we don't do this. We don't do that. We have rules. Mm -hmm. Listen to yourself sometimes, you know, when you ruminate, oh my gosh, I can't believe they told me this. After a fight, that's the first thing the enemy tells you. Oh, look, you have no rule. They are doing their own thing. They're going to do this. They're going to do that. And we don't speak up because we're like, yeah, that's true. He just did that to me. <laughs> he just came and sat right here and told me. But God is saying, listen to what I'm saying. I'm going to show you how they, sh they see love. Because unfortunately, they don't see. They don't see what you see. Your eyes are open. Their eyes are closed. But he's going to try. He's going to teach you just like he was teaching in parables. He says it in his word that I teach them because they can't see. So he taught them in stories. He told the parable of the lost son. He says, my son was dead and now he's alive. We don't only want to pray for those that are on drugs, our children that are on drugs and all that. We want to pray for our children that are even in education, in, in our lawyers and doctors and judges, whatever they are today. We need to pray that God would let them come to their senses and begin to hear his voice. I, I went to college and it was so interesting on how much they, they promote um, ungodly principles and things that they want you to see that God um, is embracing Buddha or you could believe in Buddha and you could believe in this person and this God and this God. But see, I, I had to tell one of them, I have to believe in the God that created me from dust, <laughs> from That's nothing. So he created me uh, a, a long time ago and they will all stay quiet because then they'll say, oh, well, you haven't, you haven't took the philosophy class, you haven't took this class. But see, when we pray as parents, we divert the plans of the enemy and God can use anyone in that school to begin to pray and intercede and bring people in even undercover. I mean, I know that, you know, we, we're not going to go out and tell the, the professor, I'm going to take your mic and I'm going to begin to speak to these students, but God could use us and show us that person right there needs me, uh, begin to speak, you know, speak through me and you know I'm going to speak through you and I'm going to give them a word and that has happened several times even in our lives if we look back and where God even in a season that's dark for us God will bring somebody even that we don't know and begin to show them parts of our life that's where the prophetic becomes powerful we call people prophets and prophetesses but it's because they see ahead mm -hmm. of time they see things um, that no one else sees yet because they're either not open to God and hearing his voice and begin to be a mouthpiece for God. Even in the areas we, we are prophetic people. If you know God, you're a prophetic voice. And that that's why it's so powerful what our words say. You know, we all have to go back and track our words. There is no one that's perfect and that says all the right words. But we could retract our words and say, God, I don't agree with that. Let that fall to the ground. And I began to declare and decree that my children are taught by you and great shall be their peace and undisturbed composure. That my Amen. children are coming in alignment with your word. And they're not looking to the left or to the right, but they're running to your house, even when we don't see them. And then we, you know, stop comparing your children to the children that are in church. Oh, look at their kid. <laughs> They're like, oh, well, I don't know what you're saying, but I'm, I'm my son's a Billy Graham. He's going to come in and begin to save souls for the kingdom. And he's not there. <laughs> but let me tell you, in my eyes, he's there. And I'm excited every time I go into church because I see my kids going to the altar. And I see that the anointing that's on me is double in them. So guess what, devil? They're going to come in and they're going to run and they're going to see. We're going to see the house of God 
filled to its capacity because they bring people. Do you know our children? If you watch our children, they'll start bringing people in. All the mm -hmm. the, the orphans and the they'll bring everyone in, and you're looking at them like, where did you find these people? You know what I mean? Yep. But see, they're they're they want to help. They were built for that. They were built to bring people to God, but see, they're bringing them through a different vein. All we got to do is keep on prophesying that they're coming to a place that we came to. It's not impossible for God to reach them because he reached me and you. Mm -hmm. He reached, um, he reached Norma, right? Norma, when she was out there and she told me <laughs> her life and she, it was hard. You know, it's not impossible for him to reach you. It wasn't impossible for him to reach any one person that you see on the pulpit, God reached them. If you sat with them and heard their testimony, you or your mouth would drop. Mm -hmm. and, and, and those that say, oh, well, my, my child goes to school, you know, he's a lawyer, just judge, he's, he's, he'll never go for it. Well, I don't believe that. I believe Amen. God could show up whatever he wants. And I believe that they, when they come to their senses, all that stops. So, you know, all that uh, knowledge, they're like, wow, I didn't know all of this because they begin to know God. One-on-one mm -hmm. -on -one knowledge of God makes us more powerful than if we just know the God of Norma. Yeah. I, I know that the God of Norma is powerful because when, po when Norma gives a word or when she prays for people, it's powerful. But how did Norma get that power? She was like the prodigal son too. When she realized, oh, this is not, not good. good. <laughs> um, I need somebody, somebody to help me. Even if it started in a church, maybe you didn't know God and you wanted to go to church because you wanted to meet a guy. I don't know. Or a girl, you know. <laughs> but the thing is, is God got a hold of you through that. Amen. He changed your life forever. And you got to know a God that was loving and gracious. Yes. And, and once you were dead and you were lost and you're, you were the prodigal and you were the one. So when we become, we come in Christ, we don't become Pharisees. We become carriers of God's glory. We begin to steward what he's shown us, how he's taught us. He, he becomes father, not only of us, but he becomes father of our children. He becomes the father of the fatherless. He becomes, he becomes everything to you. If you need a husband because you're tired, you're raising your children, then know that he's with you. He's with you to guide you. He's with, he's with you to show you how to pray. You know, it, I didn't start as a prayer warrior. Sometimes I used to just look at my Bible and say, okay, so what do I pray? God, I know you're there somewhere. <laughs> I didn't go Shonda Makato. I went, what do I do next? <laughs> And nobody was there to show me, but God. But I, I used to say, I, you, Holy Spirit, I know you're real, but I don't hear you yet. Is that real? Because that's how our kids are going to do it. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know the God, my, I don't know that person that, that he or she are saying, that, talking about. But you know them, mm -hmm. so you have to show me that you're real. And God will begin to show your children. And not only that, if you have spiritual children, children that are away, you're, you know what, people that you have compassion for sometimes, when you're praying for them, it's like, God, they're getting worse. And I'm all like, oh, redemption draws nigh. You know, because <laughs> you know what? God is coming for them. He's fierce. He's a mighty man of war. He does amazing things as a father. Amen. He shows up like never before. Have you ever got that call from that child that you haven't talked to and they start talking about God and you're like, God? You're talking about God? <laughs> and you have to change your focus because you're thinking they're going to tell you about something they did wrong or they want money <laughs> or they want, they want another car. Can they borrow your car? But God will, <laughs> God will use them and they'll say, he'll say, hey, look. Uh, I was reading something. I like my son because he always tells me stories. Well, you know, this guy at work talks about God all the time. And he tells he tells the guy at work, I know my mom got, always talks about God. So you're like my mom. See, because he knows that when God is in you, you can't stop talking about him. Yeah. You have to talk about him about everything. Even when you're cooking, you're talking about God. Because... Mm -hmm you are in love with him or you're worshiping, you make up your own songs, you know, about God and he'll start talking and they'll be like, that's not even a song, mom, but you're singing about him, you know? Yeah. And then you see God manifest in your children and it becomes 
a glimmer of hope and we need to stand in hope we need to stand a hope and not hoping and praying and expecting God to do what he promised us that Amen. he doesn't lie he doesn't just tell us something to make us happy. You know, sometimes we, we tell our kids, I'm going to give you candy if you're good. And then we forget. You know what I mean? He doesn't, <laughs> he doesn't forget. Our kids remind us too. They're like, uh, you said you were going to give us that candy. And that's what we have to tell God. You, we remind you of your word to us. Amen. Because your word says that you're not a liar. That Amen. you're a truth teller. You tell the truth. Amen. And you know and that they'll know the truth and the truth will set we'll you set free. Them will set them free. And you know what, when we, when we start uh, running around like chickens without a head, cause I know I've even had that had to call somebody and say, you know what, we need to pray. Cause uh, yeah, that doesn't look real well. You know, that looks bad because when it gets bad, it gets bad, right? The enemy is always going to say, Oh, look, Ooh, this is getting, Ooh, you, this is going to happen. And all these scenarios come in your head and you have to sit down with God and say, this is not going to happen. I'm done with it. I'm. It's over Fear because not in. the end of the book is is that we win, and so in the end of the book we begin That's to it. see that God has has done all that He said He would do, and when we begin to prophesy that over them and begin to declare it over them, and begin to see them as God sees them, and even see those people that maybe. They call, like I hear people say, oh, they're bad influences. When we begin to declare and pray over them, because we don't know if they're orphans or what they went through. I know right now trafficking is really big. And, you know, they're nice people mm -hmm. that are trafficking. You know what I mean? The, these people are not, they don't wear um, an evil devil mask. They don't wear a witch's hat. They come as a very nice person mm -hmm. and they will study you. The enemy studies you. So remember, he's studying you. So we need to constantly say, do I declare and decree that confusion comes to the enemy's camp, that mm -hmm. they would not be able to study my children, my grandchildren. They would not be able to study my spiritual children. Whatever it is that you're, you're praying for, begin to show up in prayer and God will show out in the natural Amen. and if we begin to see God and who he is and begin to to know that he's our partner in this that we're going to win no matter what even the prodigal sons the the parable itself explains how he uh, how a father or a mother because you know some of us we we come from one parent homes yeah. and single parent homes mm -hmm. and it says how the prodigal son's father reacted. He, he didn't say, I'm, how dare you ask me for this money? He said, okay, here. And a lot of us wouldn't do that. And I'm not saying to go do that. But I'm saying that he was not afraid. He didn't show no fear. The Bible doesn't say that he was afraid. He was, he was in total turmoil. He was ruminating of all the bad things that were happening from his son. He had to go on and work every day. Mm -hmm. He worked his land. He did what he had to do. He gave what he had to do first, you know, what his son asked for, and he let him go. Mm -hmm. That's hard, right? Well, yeah, but see, the beautiful part about this whole story, and it's not a story, it's a well, parable, it's a story, but what I'm trying to say is that you see God's heart in the Father, how he received him, he gave him a ring, he gave him a new sandal, he gave him a new outfit, basically. He he threw a party for the prodigal son, and the word of God says that this in, in heaven, when a prodigal comes back, when a the someone has said Jesus Christ is the Lord and Savior, there's a party in heaven, there's some uh, a rejoice in heaven. And how much joy it is, because even the um, the parable where the lady lost her coin, and when she found it, one coin. Can you imagine how much important is her soul? Can you imagine how much important is one person? The Lord says that he will leave the 99 to go look for the one. That's how big the love of the Father is. And unfortunately, we're running out of time, but I just got to say, you know, the Lord loves you where you are. He, he will come to you, to your rescue, where you are. 
He's not telling you change first. He's not telling you stop doing this, stop doing that. He's telling you come. Yes. See what it took for the prodigal son to come to his sense and realize I am wrong. And he went back. He took action. He something snapped out of him and he walked through it. So I encourage you today, if you are in that position, take action. Come to the Father. He's waiting for you. His hands are wide open. His arms are wide open to just for you to come. And also mothers and fathers, don't give up. Yes. Like I said, we, we walk in this walk with you guys. We know what it feels to see our kids out there. But we're not giving up. We're declaring thus says the Lord. We're not declaring what we see with our natural eyes because our natural eyes could go so, like, it could go nuts. But right now, I just want to say a prayer. Father, in the yes, name of Lord, Jesus, Jesus, Father, we come name. in agreement yes, right now, Father. hope and I, Lord. Yes, and we say, Lord, Father, you, do Father. it again. Yes, do it yes. again. Reach to those broken hearts, Father yes, God. God. Father Jesus, God, come. Name. And bring healing, bring yes, restoration, yes. even to the fathers. I speak strength into yes, their bones. Lord I speak Jesus strength name. into their hearts, Father God, that they Jesus will not give name. up on yes, their kids, Father Lord God. Name. I speak strength in the supernatural, Father yes, God, right now, Lord. Lord. And Jesus. we lift up everyone in prayer. There is releasing prayers to the Father for the yes. children. And we say, yes, Lord. We pick them up. We come in yes. agreement and we say, yes, Lord. Yes. Do it again, Jesus Father. Name. Do it it again in the name of Jesus oh Jesus this was so good hope thank you for coming thank, thank you for so sharing much. your heart yes. and um I just gotta say this was amazing you know and I didn't even wanted to talk I just wanted her to talk because she's like boom 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 you know I might buy her over again maybe next time she could release some prophetic words <laughs> <laughs> Or we could do a face, uh, Facebook Live where you could go there and do that. Well, I'll surprise you guys. We're not sure what we would do, but thank you, Hope, for coming. Thank you so much for And me. thank you, really. I appreciate you sharing your heart with us about the prodigal sons. It, I know this is an amazing top, top, topic. I just love it. And uh, until next time, and thank you again for coming. And remember... In everything in your life, try to look for the fingerprint of God in your life. God bless you. The preceding program was brought to you by the Holy Spirit Broadcasting Network, HSBN Television.